In recent days, there has been a tremendous amount of discussion online between friends about whether or not cruise ships are safe for you and your family. Today, I'm going to go over a few facts and figures and give you my opinion about those cruise ships. Now, in this video, I am going to be talking a lot about the Disney Cruise Line, but I am going to go into some of the other cruise ships as well. I'm going to be pulling some of the information from the web and we'll link all the sources in the description of this video. Let me know if this sounds familiar. You turn on the TV or you look at Twitter or look at the news and you see, oh my gosh, there's another ship with a lot of people who have the neurovirus or some other virus got sick on board and the entire ship is either quarantined or everyone who got off just isn't feeling well. Whatever it is, you've probably heard about that. I have personal experience with this. I have gotten sick on board before and I can tell you from firsthand experience, it's not fun. I decided to do a bit of research and found that in 2013, there were nine separate outbreaks of illnesses on board cruise ships. These aren't just small illnesses, these are ones that are reported to the CDC so that they know exactly what's happening, neurovirus, whatever it is, large scale illnesses on board in one year. When I first saw that, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, maybe I've underestimated this, maybe more people get sick on board than I realized, but then I took a look at the number of cruisers and the number of different cruise lines in the United States alone. And in 2013, 16.7 million cruise passengers were on board. That's that's one year. That's 2013 alone, over 16 million passengers. So that makes your chance of getting sick less than one in 14,000. From what I've read, the reason why it becomes such an issue is because cruise ships are close quarters. If no one on board is sick to begin with, and the chance of someone getting sick is really low because you don't have any illnesses on board and no one else is getting on board. Once you stop at an island, that's a separate story, totally separate issue there, but if everyone on board is well, are you really going to get sick? Tough to know. Now how do we know about all these figures? Luckily the CDC requires that if there's any gastrointestinal illnesses on board, it be reported every time they port in, and there's a cleaning requirement of all passenger cruise ships every single time it comes to the United States, and it has to pass inspection every time. Now while I was thinking about this topic, I decided to ask myself the question that I know you may be asking, Michael, what about the different cruise lines? Is there a difference in the likelihood that you're going to get sick on maybe Royal Caribbean or Carnival or Disney or Holland America? Is there a greater chance on different cruise lines? I decided to let the numbers speak for themselves here, so I'm going to go through a list, several different years worth of data and different reported illnesses. Now keep in mind, smaller illnesses are not reported in this way. It's only when it's really, really large do they get reported to the CDC, but I feel like it's really important information either way. For 2017, kind of going backwards in the year, you've got Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, I saw a few Princess Cruises on there, Holland, America, Oceana, a couple others, and you can see the dates, where the sailing was, the cruise ship, and the agent that was causing the illness. Sometimes it's known, sometimes it's unknown. In 2018, Viking Ocean Cruises, Crystal, Holland, you've got the Regent, another Holland, Silver Sea, Celebrity, it goes on and on, and then starting the year off with that princess. 2019, Norwegian Cruise Line, there's a couple Aida ones right there, kind of that, you can see the virus continued from cruise to cruise, which is a scary part. Carnival, you've got Oceana, Princess, Viking, and Royal Caribbean again. In 2020, so far, we've got the Princess Cruise Ships, Holland America, and a recent Royal Caribbean one with that neurovirus. Now, I know this information is a little bit scary to see, but I gotta tell you, I'm really glad that we have access to it. Again, I am linking it in the description of this video so you can take a look at it yourself. And it's good to know different cruise lines sometimes by the years have different viruses go through. Sometimes they're more aggressive, sometimes they're less aggressive, kind of affecting more or less people. Tough to know, but it's good to see that this list exists. Now you may be asking yourself, Michael, has Disney Cruise Line ever been affected? Yes, they have. I found it in 2016, the Disney Wonder, from April 27th to May 1st had the neurovirus on board. So no cruise line is exempt from illness on board, but it goes to show it's been several years since Disney Cruise Line had an outbreak like this. Now, what does all of this data mean? Does it mean that one cruise line is far safer than other cruise lines, or maybe you are less likely to get sick on some of those cruise ships that aren't on this list as frequently? I'll let you decide that for yourself. But if you look at this list, for example, and remember on our most recent cruise, I caught the flu in January on board the Disney cruise ship. So for me, it's not on this list. Even though I was sick, I was affected, it was not on this list. So take this information with you know a little bit of a grain of salt there. It's good to know, it is good to know, but it doesn't guarantee anything. Now thinking about myself for a moment, will I be going on less cruises because of this information? 
Not at all. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I am not a scientist, but I believe that personal hygiene plays a very large role in this. If I touch my face less, maybe I just wash my hands a lot more frequently. Every single thing from opening the door to the bathroom or my stateroom, I gotta wash my hands constantly. And if I do that, I feel like my chances of getting sick go down dramatically. Now, that being said, I do plan on not going on as many cruises during the flu season. That's the only change I'm planning to make for myself. Will I go on cruises again in January and all that? Absolutely, I will, but probably less frequently. I like it when it's warmer anyway, so it makes a lot of sense, but it's just one of those factors that is now playing into my mind as I think about how I wanna make sure I do not get sick on vacation. Now, considering this list, does that mean I will never try one of these other cruise lines? Not at all, I'm not sure if I will in the future because I love cruising Disney so much, but I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't hesitate to that degree just because they've been on this list. Now, why is that? Why is it that I wouldn't hesitate to go on a Royal Caribbean cruise because they are on this list more than once. Wouldn't I feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want to get sick. I might get sick on Royal Caribbean. Not at all. It comes down to those numbers. Disney Cruise Line has four ships at the time of filming. Three in order we know about, but only four at the moment. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, has 26 cruise ships in operation today and six more on order. So your chances of getting sick, of course, you're gonna have more people, so more chances. The fact that they only have it you know, listed once or twice that the people get sick or neurovirus on 26 different cruise ships throughout the entire year, in my opinion, is pretty good. When it comes to personal hygiene and staying well on board, I recommend those personal hygiene tricks, washing your hands, keep your hands away from your face. I feel like that's going to go a long way to keep you well on vacation. I can tell you from experience, getting sick on board a cruise is not fun, not even close, just because you want to be able to remember all of those magical moments. And when you've got a fever, or you're coughing, or you're feeling really ill, you're not going to be able to remember those moments, and they probably won't be magical because you won't be feeling well. So staying well is very important and remembering those simple hygiene tasks is really gonna help with that. I sure hope you found this video helpful and informative if you are thinking about going on a cruise in the not so distant future. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day.